Hello, I'm Joyce Stefala. If we haven't met, I'm the assistant minister here, and I'm standing in today for Dr. Edward, who is in Thailand. Yes, yes. And uh, here we are in this month where we are looking at the power to receive. And excuse me, my power to receive fell on the floor here. This is the book we have been studying this month is The Power of Receiving by Amanda Owen. And uh, I personally have been on vacation myself, so in order to get up to speed, I watched the videos of the past couple weeks of Dr. Edward speaking online. I don't know if any one of you have gone online to look at the videos, but aren't they beautifully done, professionally done? I really want to just take a moment to acknowledge the team. We have Amanda Raines and Keith Eggle at the head. Our host today, Louis Salazar, is one of the cameramen, and director Richard Cullinan, and uh, Rebecca and Carl. There's a whole crew of people. I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but they just do beautiful work. When we miss a Sunday, we can catch up, but also there are so many people around the world who are able to access this life-affirming message. So here we are in this month of looking at the power of receiving, and Dr. Edward has been leading us in self-reflection on questions like, where in my life am I not receiving? And what is it that stops me from receiving? And are there times when I'm a taker rather than a receiver? Those kind of questions. And it's all been an invitation to clear away anything that might be stopping us from receiving the good of the Divine One that is being offered 24-7 moment after moment, continuously, constantly, eternally. Because you know, we can only, God can only give us as much as we can receive. That's it. It's up to us. The only limit is what are we receiving. In fact, Holmes writes, even God cannot give us anything unless we are in a mental condition to receive the gift even God, and he explains, it's impossible for you to receive that which your mind refuses to accept. If you desire to receive more, you need to consciously develop the ability to mentally encompass it. Mentally encompass it. What does that mean? I'm reminded of a time several years ago where I really wanted a hot tub. And I was reading Louise Hay at the time. And she has an exercise where she says, if you want something, picture it in your mind at a distance and uh, watch it coming closer in your mind and see how far that thing can get before you get uncomfortable. So I said, right, okay, so I pictured this hot tub, it was, you know, off in the distance, it was coming closer, coming closer, and coming closer, and it got about 30 feet away from me, and all of a sudden, I was uncomfortable. It, there was something that said, no, this is not yours. So I really had to take a look at that. What is stopping me from having a hot tub? And I was thinking about issues of being deserving and having self-worth and spending money on myself. And as I continued to do that kind of work, I'd continue to do the exercise. And, you know, by gum, that hot tub was getting closer and closer in my mind. And finally, one day, it was about, like, two feet away. <laughs> and um, I said to myself, well, why am I looking at this thing? I'm just going to go get one. But that really is how it works. I mean, I could have done that four months ago on one hand, but no, I couldn't have. I did not have the consciousness to receive that good. So that's what we're looking at today. And today we're looking at it from a slightly um, different focus. You might have noticed the topic in the bulletin, which is enabling is not giving. Now, that topic comes right off of page 38. It says here, enabling is not giving. I didn't think of it myself. 
So, um, in order to talk about this idea that enabling is, is not giving, let's get clear what we mean by these terms. So, first of all, giving is a natural state of open generosity. Natural in that it is the very nature of God to give, to give, to give, to give. And because each one of us is one with God, then naturally that is our nature. We really are hardwired to both desire to give and to have the ability to give. That's why it's referred to as a natural state. Open generosity. Open meaning without constriction, without mm, contraction. You know the way you can sometimes, I can feel it myself if I'm giving something and there's a little hesitation or if I'm giving in an open-hearted way. So, therefore, giving is a natural state of open generosity. What's enabling then? Well, I believe that enabling, that word, began its life in a very neutral way, just meaning the ability to, um, or rather, providing someone with the means to do something. But over time, it's taken on kind of a negative connotation where it's become, uh, it's come to mean providing someone with the means to do something that isn't for their highest good to keep them stuck in being dependent. So with this definition, helping someone stay stuck in a lesser, more limited version of themselves. This kind of clarity has come out of 12-step work where enabling often means contributing to the addiction, uh, to contributing to another person in such a way that the addict maintains their addiction. So, for example, an alcoholic uh, relative who's just lost it so much that he's lost his job and now he's out and doesn't have any money and comes for money. What do you do? That's the question. And it's a tough question. Amanda Owens has some other examples of what she considers Enabling, she says, a mother who constantly picks up after her children rather than teaching them to put their things away. Or a person who covers for his co-worker's habitual tar tardiness by doing the person's work. So this is not easy territory to navigate because our compassionate hearts want to help. And there's something very satisfying and gratifying when we can see immediately how our giving is helping somebody. So Amanda Owens reminds us of this Chinese proverb, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he will eat for a lifetime. Now, I suspect that you, like me, have heard that a gazillion times, and I almost just had it go over my head. But then I remembered the first time that I ran into that phrase, it really helped me differentiate between enabling and empowering. So if enabling is helping someone stay stuck in a lesser, more limited version of themselves, then empowerment is assisting someone in realizing the most expansive version of themselves, their state of being, which has the most possibility. So, of course, there are times when others come to us and they're truly in need and, and we are uh, in a position to provide for them empowered giving. From time to time, we all experience crises, health crises, emotional crises, financial crises, and there is definitely appropriate giving and assistance at that time. But I think the questions that will help us differentiate if we are giving in an empowered way or in an enabling way are these three questions. 
am I respecting the person as an equal or am I pitying them as less than? Am I assisting the person to move forward or am I, am I helping to keep them stuck? Am I allowing the person to experience more possibilities or am I keeping them limited in what they can do? And even with these guidelines, we can be faced with some very tough choices. Whether or not it's time to take a parent to a facility where they could get better care, or is that adult child of mine really ready to fly solo? Or, gosh, should I end this relationship? It seems to be supporting some negative behavior. It's difficult to know sometimes what the highest good is for the other person, and not only for the other person, but for everyone involved. As we've been looking at this month, we live in a reciprocal universe, and in fact, we are all one in a very real, true, spiritual way. There is only one of us here. So any decisions need to be made by keeping in mind the highest good for everyone in the situation. And sometimes there are just so many factors and viewpoints involved that the best I can do is to ask the question, what would love do? What's the highest expression of love? and just wait for guidance as to the next step, whether it's to get more information, or to talk to another person, to start to act. It's also very important to remember that behind the circumstances, there's a spiritual truth, which is that every person is one with spirit divinely designed to have full access to all of spirit's qualities. Life, intelligence, joy, love, peace, power. Every person is divinely designed to have full access to all of spirit's qualities. If we start from that premise of thinking about the other person in the situation, thinking of them as you are fully spiritually empowered, you are a fully spiritually empowered expression of God, then there'll be a greater chance of our relationship and actions leading to mutual empowerment. As I was thinking about these ideas of sorting out enabling versus empowering, I began to consider this question. Where in my life am I enabling myself rather than empowering myself? Are there places in my life where I'm pitying myself rather than respecting myself? Places where I'm staying stuck rather than moving forward? are places where I'm limiting my choices rather than expanding my possibilities. And I found that these questions were like, I'd call it a flashlight, beaming light, but it was kind of more like a lightsaber that just <laughs> right in on areas where I need to do a little spiritual work. So, so much so, as I was reflecting on this, that I actually had to write an affirmation in the middle of the reflection. Here's the affirmation. I am one with the power that created the universe. Therefore, I am empowered to do this. Do you care to say it with me? I am one with the power that created the universe. Therefore, I am empowered to do this. So that first question, are there places in my life where I'm pitying myself rather than respecting myself? And I found one right away, one of those areas where it's like, 
Oh, poor me. Everybody else knows how to do X and Y, and I, I, just, I just don't know how to do X and Y. <laughs> and I thought, what? You know, well, you could learn how to do X and Y. So that's what I discovered about me. And my question to you is, is there somewhere in your life where you notice you could be respecting yourself more? And together we can say, I am one with the power that created the universe, therefore I am empowered to do this. Second question, are there places in my life where I'm staying stuck rather than moving forward? And this one really made me laugh because anyone who has spent uh, any amount of time with me, 20 minutes, uh, will know that I've had an ongoing project, a life project, of cleaning out my home office. <laughs> and uh, it uh, started to get uh, kind of, you know, well, worse. Uh, when I was in ministerial school and papers started uh, stacking up, and by the way, I graduated 10 years ago, so <laughs> you can imagine... And there's uh, Betty Perkins who helped me feng shui things in there. It, it looks lovely, and I'm coming along, Betty. Uh, and also, I had another counselor <laughs> last year uh, uh, said to me, Joyce, just take 10 minutes a day and just do a little bit. Um, by the way, Betty suggested 15 minutes. I kind of like the 10 better. So anyhow... <laughs> The next time I saw him, he asked me how it was going, how the 10-minute routine was going. And I said, well, it's very interesting that I haven't actually done any work in my home office, but there are so many other rooms in my house that now have incredible beauty and order in them. <laughs> Funniest thing. And I expected him to be just as proud of me as I was. And he simply looked at me and said, Joyce, it's been 10 years. <laughs> at which point I realized that th this is an area that I, I was keeping myself stuck. I was just keeping myself stuck. Don't know why, but I'm also happy to say it's changed uh, during my vacation. Um, it now looks a lot better. You could even come visit if you like. It's at that stage. <laughs> or help. So I think it's time for our affirmation again. I am <laughs> with the power that created the universe. Therefore, I am empowered to do this. It's getting louder in here. <laughs> the last question I thought about is the one, is there somewhere in my life where I'm limiting my choices rather than expanding my possibilities? Oh, that uncovered a very kind of odd realization that I've slipped into some ageist thinking. Like, oh, I'm this age now, so I really won't be able to do that. And it's like, what? Wait a minute. I'm perfectly capable right now of doing that thing. So I realized that it was my area. Enough about me. The question to you is... <laughs> Is there somewhere in your life where you need to expand your possibility thinking? And together we can say, I am one with the power that created the universe. Therefore, I am empowered to do this. So now I'll let you in on a secret which is that as we get better at doing those three things, respecting ourselves, moving forward, expanding our limits, we are also becoming better receivers and better givers. Why? Because we are remembering more and more our true divine nature that we are expressions of God who are worthy of receiving good, who are fully equipped to respond to a dynamic universe. 
and who are open to the feast of opportunities that the Divine One is offering us. So to close our time together, I'd like to offer you some words from Ernest Holmes that clearly and kindly remind us of this. As you just relax and take them in, let them encourage you, let them empower you, let them embolden you, both in your ability to know your own true empowered self and to increase your openness to receive good into your life. You see that Claire and Randall have joined me in this desire to provide a way to help open to receiving and remembering who we truly are. I am one with the infinite and perfect spirit, the giver of all good and perfect gifts. I know that this living presence is in every cell of my body, every function of my being. I am born of the Spirit. I am in the Spirit. I am the Spirit made manifest. The life of the Spirit is my life. All of its strength is my strength. Its power is my power. My whole being is renewed, invigorated, and made alive. Every breath I draw is a breath of perfection, vitalizing and renewing every cell of my body. I open my mind, heart, and body to the inflow of the Divine Presence. Practicing the presence of illuminated light, we stand together as one. Witnessing the essence of the thing behind all life, we stand together in love. I am living in the continual expectancy that every good thing in my experience shall be multiplied. I know that the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. I have complete confidence in this Spirit. My life is filled with blessings for myself and others. I am made whole with the wholeness of the Spirit. I am guided into right action and success of all good desires. My acceptance of the fullness of the presence of God flows out in joy and love to bless those whom I would help. And we all join hands and our hearts open wide. Come feel the power of love inside. Yes, we walk in love and we stand. The radiance of joy in my own heart brings happiness into the lives of all those around me. The abundance that benefits me supplies everyone around me with the good things of life. The light that warms the center of my being so shines forth that all may find guidance and warmth and comfort in its rays. This is the fount from which spring the living waters. I drink and will not thirst again. And even as I drink, I hand the chalice of my faith to all. And we all join hands and our hearts open wide. Come feel the power of love inside. 
Yes, we walk in love and we stand for peace, practicing the presence of the I invite you for just a moment to linger in the awareness of the presence of the one. <laughs> 